going? Cool. We do this. So, uh, my MD lab this year was that. I mean, you guys can read. Lens and temperature. So, my, the way I, this was really just an idea I had, like at the very last minute. Um, and I just thought to myself, if, if, what if I had a lens that was on fire? <laughs> yeah, Jackson. But I realized that was very like impractical for a, an experiment because a lot of things could go wrong, like like lens aberrations and whatnot. But I actually like thought about it for a little bit, and I realized that when things are heated, they usually expand outwards linearly in all directions, and we learned that in thermodynamics. And I thought. And, and so when a lens like gets bigger or thicker, the focal length of it changes or it increases. And I actually combined these two and thought, what if I had a lens? What, what if the lens got bigger? Like if it's, what if its focal length got bigger through thermal expansion? And I just kind of went with this idea. And my hypothesis was if the lens undergoes linear thermal expansion, then its, its focal length would increase. And those are the equations. I just, I kind of use these two in conjunction and those are really the only ones that I, yeah. well, I mean, they're, they're the ones that are relevant. And, okay, so, so, so basically to do this, I, I took the lens, I actually got one out of the big one out of Doc's room. I put it in an oven for about 80 degrees. So the lens itself got about 80 degrees Celsius. And then I placed it about 20 centimeters away from an object, which was an LED flashlight. And I kept the object distance constant throughout the whole experiment. And the screen was moved along the same sort of like axis or whatever. And I I moved that till it was focused, kind of like the lab we did, and I noted where this happens on relative to where the lens was. And the data was taken, so I heated it up to 80 degrees, but I didn't start taking data till about 70 degrees Celsius, and I ended at about 20 degrees, because that's what the room temperature was of the lens. And let's see, yeah, and I basically took increments going down from 70 to like five degrees. And I had, so Doc wanted me to like have a fan blowing on it because there was a very real uh, possibility that the lens could break due to like, uh, I forgot what it was called, like imbalanced like thermal expansion or whatever. It would cause the lens to like crack or whatever, or maybe even explode. Yeah, um, yeah so here's the lens. It's uh, there, it's very, Got a very powerful, and I just put in the oven. <laughs> and here's my setup. Um, that's the ruler. That's the lens. Or the, that's the LED flashlight. That's the screen, which is a genuine PlayStation 2. Um, actually, not yet. That's like. Yeah. So, so actually, I had some help from my brother, who was an alumnus of Webster. And he actually raised the, the LED flashlight to the geometric center of the lens, which I wasn't going to do, but it was actually a very good idea. And I measured the temperature of the lens with the infrared thermometer. Um, and yeah, there's the fan. There's a measurement of the yeah. distance. And there's, there's an image on there. kind of looks like, like this nine dots or whatever, or however many. So you get the idea. But not spotting. And so, uh, let's see. I guess so. So here's the data. Um, I measured the lens temperature objects, location, image location, the focal length, which we calculated, and the change in, well, okay. You're supposed to measure the change in length of the lens. I tried to measure the change in diameter, but it turns out that's incredibly hard to detect. 
Um, so those, those values are rather questionable. But from that, we also got the coefficient of linear expansion, or alpha. Um, and here's some sample calculations of that. So here are the graphs, and we can simply tell that it's from the data table from last page. And yeah, I mean, we can tell the trend, I guess, because this one's linearized. <coughs> and it's it's pretty linear. We don't, we don't have a lot of data points, though. Because, yeah, well, so we, we, we moved, for this one, we did the change in length, or delta L over delta T. Um, and that would give us L naught times the alpha. And the values there, which you probably can't see it very well. Yeah, so the, the These, slope, can I read it? Uh, no, it's, the first. Yeah, I think about it. Never mind. It's okay. I can't even read that on the board. Yeah, yeah, I can't either. And, but these, these two up here, um, I didn't really do anything with them. Like they're just there as sort of like represent, representations of the trends that we noticed. Because I don't. It turns out that this was extremely flawed. Um, that's the graphical analysis. Yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, that's slow because of, I mentioned that before, delta L over delta T equals L naught alpha. And like I said, um, the trends were kind of weird. We didn't, we didn't think they were necessarily linear. They're kind of weird, and we didn't have enough mathematical foundation for them. Um, and I really just, I just kind of like decided that the trends are more important than the actual, uh, or the, the overall trend, like whether it was positive or like inverse or whatever, whatever it most closely represented it, I feel like that was the most important part of it, as opposed to the actual values. Uh, because, like I said, very flawed. Um, you couldn't really see the change in size because it, it was just kind of, it was, it, was kind of, it was really small and you really needed like precise like calipers or probably something even more like articulate than that. Um, so they're actually rather rough estimates. And also the image, the focused image was kind of subjective. Usually like I wasn't, I wasn't exactly sure if I had the image focused at some times, but yeah. Close enough. Just, and this is kind of why, because this is why um, I'm focusing more on like how the, what the trend was like, as opposed to the actual numerical values, because if you do the math, that's like uh, 21,000 percent. No, that's not 21. Or it's like really high. It's, I think percent wise would be 20, yeah, 21,000 percent. Yep. <laughs> So here's our conclusion. Um, so the focal lens, when heated up, the focal lens does expand, and that's what we did in our hypothesis. Well, yeah, sorry. And, well, and also the thermal expansion is really small, according to our data, because you can see that the slope is extremely low, so. I guess what I should also point out that we used the value of alpha for Pyrex glass, and not like regular glass, because Pyrex has a lower alpha than regular because it's the stuff that like measuring cups are made out of in your kitchen because it, it's, it's more industrial than regular and it's kind of significant. It's harder to like yeah. explode I guess. It's harder to explode and it's harder to break and I wasn't sure like even Doc wasn't sure like what the lens was made out of yeah. and I kind of guessed it was Pyrex because it's, it's more industrial. like practical yeah. and not like I guess. But yeah. Uh, Any questions? I think that's it. Anybody got any questions? What was your delt, or like what was your length that you measured? Was it the top to bottom? It was the, of it the was, lens, or like it was the entire right? like diameter of the lens. Okay. Yeah, like the cross sectional diameter. Cool. I should have probably, in retrospect, measured the thickness rather than the diameter. That was probably what was more likely going to change. 
had it in any of them. But yeah, that's what I ended up doing. And like, yeah, it, it was really hard to see any change, if any. Any others? <laughs> 